All right, so let's have a look at what is Docker Hub. Now, Docker Hub is essentially just like GitHub or Bitbucket. Essentially, it is a space where you can go and store your Docker images. There are other private registries as well. For example, Google's Google Container Registry. Uh, there is something called Quay.io, which is uh, Q-U-A-Y.io. I don't know if it's still live, but you can have a look at that. So there are multiple registries available where you can go and host your Docker images. Docker Hub is the official registry which is provided directly by Docker uh, and it's maintained by Docker. Now by no means it is very superior or something like that. It's just that it is given directly by Docker and hosted on docker.com domain name. Um, it allows you to create a free account of yours and a free account has one free private repository. So you can have n number of public repositories but you can have only one private repository with a free account. Uh, let's have a look at Docker billing plans. So if you want more private repositories, you could simply go ahead and upgrade according to the plan that you need. Uh, Docker Hub also allows you to fetch the images which are maintained by Docker team or by others outside of the Docker team. Uh, the ones that are maintained by Docker team are tagged with official, which basically means that these are the official images and Docker maintains them. Uh, Docker team maintains them. Otherwise, you can just also have a look at uh, the non-official images. For example, if I search for Circle CI MySQL, this is the image which is maintained by Circle CI, but it is not official, so you cannot see the official tag over here. But it's public. You can also fetch it. Just you can just use the Docker pull Circle CI slash MySQL to get it. On the other hand, if I search for official MySQL. You can see there is one official image which is maintained by the Docker team itself. So that's what that's the difference between official and non-official images. Uh, Docker Hub also allows you to build in automated manner your Docker images. Um, this is especially helpful if you are uh, in a continuous integration environment and you need to automatically build images of Docker based on the code changes that you push to GitHub. So for example, I have this one repository which is public, anybody can access it and it is done using an automated build. So if I go to its automated build settings, you can see over here that I'm using a master branch and I'm saying that my Docker file location is the root and then inside that the web directory which is, so this is the root and inside that the web directory and then the Docker file. So this is the Docker file location. That's what it needs to build the Docker image. We'll go into more details of what Docker files are and all that. Um, so every time I, I push any changes to this particular Docker file, last time I did, it was on nine, it was nine months ago. It automatically triggers the build because I have checked that when active builds will happen automatically on pushes and it, it triggers a new build and I can start using those builds once they are done. Uh, in the build details, it will show me whether it's whether the last build was successful or not successful. So that's what Docker Hub is. It's essentially just a place where you can go ahead and build your Docker images. If you want them to be private, you can keep them private. If you want them to be open for the world to use, you can just leave them as public. Uh, public images, you don't need a, a special account. A free account will work. For private images, you should have a private account if you want more than one private repositories. Otherwise, you're good with even a free account. So that's it about Docker Hub, guys. Stay tuned for more videos. And if you like this video, please comment or tell me how can I improve it if there's something that you think I should change. Also, please subscribe. It encourages me to create more such videos. Thanks for watching.